There's one little guy. I don't see all seven today. I'll try to find them in the camera. There's two. Ready to go. There's three. Oh no, that's not three. Oh yeah, it is. And then there's two more with mom. Four, five. And we see five today. Now they are shorter than the weeds, so I'm hoping some are hiding in the weeds. The water level is extremely low. It should start raining soon and fill these ponds back up. But it helps them. They're feeding all of them. They're just spread out today. Usually they're all bundled together. I hope she doesn't go down right there. That big old alligator is sitting right at the bottom of that pond right there. I might go step in. So when I shut this camera off, I'm going to step in and scare that alligator away. Especially if she goes down to the water. She's going the other way. Good mama, good mama. Okay guys, I gotta go. I'm gonna go scare that gator away. I think they're pretty safe. He's over here. And they are heading that way. There they go. Okay, everybody's safe today. Another day, six will survive. This is the same one that was just sticking up out of the water a few seconds ago. Hey guys, welcome back to Glitz and Glitter. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this one since I opened it from Timu. Um, so I'm going to do the Tree of Life today. I can't get too creative with 
it just because these branches are just so thin and it's hard to use anything but just resin. So I am going to be putting micas all over this, but not in the tree trunk. I'm going to use my brown glitter um, for the tree trunk and the branches. And I'm going to paint the leaves with this green mica from about, and this is called, what is it called? Pure? I don't know. I can't tell. Green bronze. That's what it's called. And I don't know if you could see the color very well. That's the green I chose for the leaves. Oh, I just got some in there too. Um, golden. I'm going to use for these tiny little pieces. I don't know what those are supposed to be, but I'm going to do them in the golden. And then we have birds kind of scattered around here. Not too many. So for the birds, I chose this chameleon mica, which is a blue and green. Um, this is Let's Resin teal color. And I'm also going to use for the birds this reddish color. This one I got from Timu, and it's called Purple, Blue, Red, and Orange. I did measure it with water the best I can. I'm going to mix up eight ounces. I don't think it's going to take eight ounces, but some of these areas that don't get resin in them, like these little pieces here, um, it was hard not to get water in there. So I'm just going to mix up eight ounces. We'll use the rest for freebies like we usually do. So I'm going to just grab a couple paintbrushes. I'm going to clean that out real quick. Grab some paintbrushes and just start painting it in. Okay, I'm just going to start um, getting these micas in. And my plan is to pour clear over everything that I have mica in. And then pour the the um glitter into everything that the mica is not so i really don't want a dark color over these mica powders because in my experience it dulls the color when it comes out and i'm not going to be top coating this to make it shiny again so um i I like to use lighter colors so I don't dull the colors. Um, to back that up, if you want to see a video of it dulling the colors with dark mic or dark resin, if you go into my channel, actually I'll just link it in my description. If you look at the, the uh, ice cream cone jar that I did, that is a perfect example of how the colors get dulled when you put darker colors. Now, when you use chameleon powders, it seems to work better. But the chameleon powders themselves also will change depending on what color resin you put on top of those. I mean, if you put clear, it's a completely different outcome. If you use a lighter white or whatever, it's another outcome. Black is another outcome. So experiment with them and see what you like the best. So I I like the lighter colors on mica just because I don't like the dulled dulled out colors. So I'm just going to get these colors in here. I will fast forward because this is going to take a while. And then we will go ahead and get some resin mixed up and poured in here. So just sit back and enjoy.
Okay, I've got everything painted. Just a couple tips. Um, because I filled this with water to measure it, make sure it's completely dry. A couple of these tiny little star things. Uh, I don't think we're dry because the mica had a hard time sticking, but I think I got it all in now. And the mica does kind of spread, so I'm just taking a clean brush. I put some 99% alcohol in there, and I'm just kind of going through everywhere I didn't want it wiping it out with the alcohol i mean you might not see it because of the brown glitter that's going in but i'm not going to take any chances it's only going to take a minute and i'm just going to kind of go up wipe it off on my paper towel and then keep going so i'm going to get all these cleaned up and then we'll get some resin poured in here after i put all the mica powder in i flipped it over as you could see and i just kind of Got all the extra dust out to keep keep it to a minimum on the back of it just because it's going to float to the surface. So I've got my 8 ounces of clear mixed up. I will link everything that I used in the description box. So as far as resins and molds and micas and things like that, if you're interested in, everything will be in the description as well as how I'm going to clean this. So I can clean this in less than a minute. So there's a minute and a half video in my description on how I clean my silicone cups quickly so I can use them right away and not wait until the next day. The only reason I'm putting this in is so I can squeeze it because these are so, so small. So I'm going to just concentrate on the colored areas. And then my plan, whether it works or not, is when I pour in the dark areas, it will push that clear back up into where it's going to come out of. So, okay, let's see. Let's see how this works. Now, obviously it flowed out, but I knew that was going to happen. So like I said, I'm hoping this pushes it back up into place. I did save some clear just to see how that's going to work. So I might change this cup because this cup cannot be pinched, but we'll see what happens. I mean, I guess if you pour it slow enough, it's just going to flow where it needs to go anyway, maybe. I'm not sure. First time doing this one. And if it goes up over them, it's not going to be a big deal because you're still going to see the, the mica powder. See, that's what I'm saying. These little, these little areas are so small. grab a different cup. I'm going to try this little tiny cup for these little branches. I'm 
mean, you're not gonna see the glitter. Like I said, the only reason I'm trying to avoid it is because I don't want to dull the colors of the mica powders. But it might give it a good contrast for some of these areas that I can't avoid. Maybe we'll get a couple different color greens. So it might actually be worth it. So if you have these tiny little silicone cups, they help a lot. So just keep refilling it. And it does push it back in. We're gonna get a little bit of overflow, but that's okay. I'm going to grab my clear and just go in these areas that are not filled up anymore so it doesn't um, make my like these this bird needs some more not kept enough clear. this. I don't think you can see everything I'm doing. Sorry. I've been like that in the beginning. Sorry guys. I do have a lot of resin left, so I definitely didn't need the eight. Let me get this done and I'll tell you how much I used. I probably don't need any more, but I don't want this much extra try to fit as much as I can in. It is not completely to the top. I'm looking from the side view and I wish I had more clear because it's definitely not full. So you probably would use more but I don't want to um, pour any brown just because it's not full. I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna spray it with alcohol. Not gonna torch this, that's for sure. And we're gonna let it set overnight. That's it, guys. I'm gonna use this extra in something else, and we will see you when this is cured. All right, I'm back, guys. I did unmold it already only because I had to take it out piece by piece, each leaf. Um, individually because I did take it out a little bit soft because I'm going to show you what I wanted to do. So I had to pull out every single leaf individual and every little thing. So it did take me quite a while. So I didn't want to do that on film. So I have it underneath this little thing to show you and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Okay. How do you think it looks? I love the glitter. 
and the brown came barely through. So some of these ones that had the brown on the back, some of these that infiltrated, you could see a little bit of glitter, which made it look even cooler. Only like half of the leaves had glitter on them. The birds colors came out good. They're still transparent, but you could see the pink and the blue. All the branches came out pretty good. So the twist I'm going to put on this one, oh, all these pieces, I don't know if you see them sitting here. These were the leftover, um, the leftover resin. So I have all these pieces that I'll be making some magnets out of, but I'm going to be using this to change this. I also made this cross. It's going to be a bookmark and this cross. So those two were extra resin. And then I did still have, I had these laying around and I backed them in the, the glitter because I wanted a background on them. They are holographic as you could see, but I needed to stiffen them up because it wasn't um, curing solid. So anytime you put a back coat on a, a thin piece, it will, it will sturdy it up. So now you can't even bend it. So these are the two that I finished with the rest of that glitter. So if you do want any of my demos, you might be getting some of this stuff. But I want to show you what I'm going to do. Instead of just letting it lay flat, I'm going to be taking things on my counter. And it's still a little bit soft. And I'm going to put things underneath it. So while it's curing, I want a 3D tree. So I did start doing this earlier, but I realized it's going to take a while to cure something this thin. So I did take it off to show you guys. I'm not going to wait until it's cured. It can take several days. So I'm just kind of lifting these pieces up. Not too much because you don't want it to crack. I'm just kind of lifting these pieces up with just stuff laying around my counter. Just to give it a little bit of dimension. You can kind of wrap it over, but I think I lost my window for the wrapping. So it'll be like, I don't know if you could see it. Maybe I'll bring you down. Hopefully I could do that without. Okay. So you can see a little bit of the dimension. I know it's easier in person because it still looks kind of flat in here. But that's just going to give it a little bit of movement instead of just a flat piece. So that's going to be my little take on it. You can color in the eyes and the beaks if you want to. I did not do that. But yeah, let me know what you think, guys. I hope you like it. Thanks for joining me. And I will get you some final pictures when um, I'm done here. So if you have not yet done so, please subscribe. Hit that like button for me. It helps me out more than you know. And I will see you guys on the next video. You guys have a blessed day. Bye.